Horizon Forbidden West is out this week, and with it comes another blistering visual showcase of both the current and previous generations of hardware. The PS4 and the PS4 Pro are pushed to their absolute limits here, whereas the PS5 is allowed to stretch its legs and showcase some truly spectacular visuals in one of two modes. You can check out our review above, but in this video I'll take you through the biggest differences between the two modes on the new machine, as well as compare it to both last gen systems and give as fair a comparison as possible. The first thing to note here is that all of Forbidden West's cutscenes are rendered in-engine, meaning that you'll likely see a similar level of performance between cutscene and gameplay, regardless of which mode you're running in. In the resolution mode, you can immediately see the pin-sharp visuals, which do indeed run at a native 4K, with a steady frame rate of 30 frames a second. Even in some of the game's busiest areas after the patch hit, I struggled to find any areas with substantial frame rate drops. Honestly, for all of the excitement some of these videos can generate, it's somewhat pleasing when the frame rate graph results in a solid line between both frame rate and frame time. There were some minor issues with frame pacing in the 30 frames a second mode before the day one patch hit, but these have been completely eliminated with the version that everybody will be playing after they get hold of the game. Something that you can see in the footage of the cutscenes are the occasional moments where the game seemingly drops a frame or two between the camera cuts. This is where the game hangs on to a single frame of animation just before the camera moves over to the next shot, giving the impression of a dropped frame even though the actual animation stays locked. In gameplay, these camera cuts are naturally not present, so the game stays at whatever frame rate you have set. Since the patch dropped, I can honestly say there were no noticeable dips in any areas at all for me, and it's a stunning technical achievement. One issue that does crop up a little bit in the performance mode, however, is the occasional moment of popping. This seems to be exclusive to that 60 frames a second mode, and it is quite rare, but it's something to note. It's not necessarily related to level of detail textures, as it tends to happen with objects that are relatively close by. This has been improved upon throughout the review process though, as there were some particularly egregious moments before the patch hit, which would have had a massive impact on people's opinions of the game. Another area that seems to have been ironed out quite a bit since the patch hit is Aloy's hair. Sounds like a strange thing to pick up on, but in some cutscenes it seemed like the hair was being loaded in fresh each time the camera cuts, which resulted in something of a bounce as the weightless hair resets itself into place. This was a little distracting, and unfortunately the worst examples of it came during some interactions which I'm bound by embargo not to talk about, but as mentioned it's definitely not as prevalent since the patch came in. Going back to the performance mode for a moment, the resolution has seemingly been boosted substantially since that day one patch. Prior to this, there were definitely elements of shimmering and pixel crawl on some defined edges, which made me suspect there were some aggressive anti-aliasing techniques being utilised. Thankfully, the patch seems to have brought the resolution up to a native 1440p, although I do suspect there's some DRS in use for some areas to keep the frame rate locked in place. The lower resolution can be noticeable in areas with small details, such as trees and areas in the distance, but it's a trade-off between that pin-sharp clarity and the fluidity that's on offer with 60 frames per second. From what I can ascertain, it seems like the game is using cube maps and screen space reflections rather than ray tracing in the resolution mode, although I am happy to be corrected on this. I've always found that flicking between the two modes can result in the 30 frames a second mode feeling a little bit like a slideshow for a while until you get used to it again, but motion blur can help with that a little bit. If you want the best visual fidelity from Forbidden West, then this is the mode to use. Honestly, there's not too much else to say outside of that because this is the visual benchmark and it's been ironed out to run at a solid 30 frames a second. One other nice touch in the game is the dynamic weather system. If you look overhead, you'll see the clouds rolling in and changing with the time of day, meaning that precipitation is a random occurrence. Of course, if you're up a mountain, you're more likely to see snow than rain, but it's a great addition to the game and it helps add to the world. What about other compromises in the performance mode then? Well, aside from the aforementioned resolution decrease, there are some other minor quibbles. On the odd occasion, there are some instances of ghosting, presumably due to the temporal AA solutions that are being used for the game. We've seen this in other games, particularly in the Uncharted remasters recently, where you may see a trailing edge of a surface being drawn a second or even third time. I played through the entire game in performance mode and noticed this maybe a couple of times. You can see what I mean here. 
if you note the trailing edge as the camera pans around. Admittedly, this isn't the normal use case for gameplay, as I was doing this specifically for this video, but it's definitely there. You can see it as well in this shot as I'm looking out across the river, with the leaves and debris leaving a strange smear across the surface of some of the water. When you switch over to the resolution mode, this disappears. Once again though, this is a bit of a niche use case for capturing footage. The major benefit of these two modes is that you're able to flick between them in the menu, so if you want to grab some super high quality images in the photo mode, you can do so by playing in the performance mode, pausing the game, enable resolution mode, entering photo mode, coming out of that and then flicking back into performance and carry on. And trust me, there will be plenty of times that you want to get involved with the photo mode in this game. But enough about the latest and greatest hardware to run Forbidden West. What about the last generation? Well, I'm genuinely shocked at how well the game runs on both systems. Let's start with the Pro. Off the bat, there is only one mode. There's no 60 frames a second available on the last generation at all, but there is a solid 30 frames a second mode. In the opening few hours, I barely encountered any frame drops outside the previously mentioned instances in the cutscenes. Obviously, there are some graphical cutbacks in the world, including on character models. On the PS5, Aloy uses the cutscene ready character model during gameplay, providing a highly detailed and very impressive model at all times. On the PS4, this is dropped down to a more traditional version of the model, with the face and body looking slightly less detailed throughout. Some areas in the world appear less dynamic than their new generation counterparts, but it's still remarkably impressive for a title running on the PS4 Pro. And while we're on the subject of Remarkable, the fact that the game runs on a base PS4 at all is pretty astonishing. Yes, it's cut back, but the core of the game is there. It's akin to getting a meal at a posh restaurant. You can order the same steak, but the PS5 has that peppercorn sauce and the grilled tomato on the side. The resolution of the PS4 version is definitely substantially lower than the PS4 Pro, but that's the obvious cutback that's required to get it running on a machine that's getting on for a decade old. At this point it goes without saying, but the loading times on the PS5 are utterly ridiculous. It's near instant to start the game up, and equally so while fast travelling. On the PS4, loading times are about what you'd expect, with the Pro just edging out the base model in terms of speed. One negative that I have to draw your attention to is an issue with short loading in the open world. This is something that affected all versions prior to the day one patch, but has mostly been eradicated since it came along. However, at random points in the open world, there may be a brief moment where the screen dips to black and then comes back up, sometimes accompanied with a loading screen. This will more than likely be in the PS4 version, but the PS5 version isn't completely immune to it, even with that day one patch. I'll leave you now with a few more comparison shots between all four versions of the game, but I think it's safe to say that whatever platform you decide to pick it up on, it will be a solid experience. <laughs> if it isn't Aloy, savior of Meridian, anointed of the Nora. You know I hate being called that stuff. Well, consider it a punishment for running out on us the very same night we beat Hades. I grew up an outcast. Remember, I'm not much for parties. Yeah. That one was...
Thank you for joining us, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, please do go and check out the review for Horizon Forbidden West. Subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment down below, and we will have some more content coming very soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.